Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Lego, and we are here today with set number 6242, The Soldier's Fort. This is a pirate set from 2009. 367 pieces contains about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 minifigures and 2 animals. Well, 3 if you count the fish. This was originally for... Um, Ages 6 to 12, and retailed at $50. Now, $50 is a great price point for this set. It was the second largest in the 2009 Pirates theme. If you don't count the Imperial ship, Imperial flagship, I don't really count that as a Pirates set. I thought that was more of a UCS thing, even though it has Pirates figures in there. Um, but this is relatively the second largest in that theme, and to be honest, this is one of my favorites. Let's take a closer look at this set now. Unfortunately, at this time, I don't have the instructions for this set with me, but I do know from memory that this is a modular build, which means all of the parts in this set are built in numbered bags. I believe they're either three or four bags associated with this set, and they also had two instruction booklets for building it. It was that large, and, you know, when you look at the actual building, it is very complex. But we're going to start off with our minifigures. The first figure we have is just a generic pirate. Um, we've seen his design in a bunch of other sets with different color combinations and different, you know, torsos and such. But essentially, the pirates in this theme are very basic and, you know, are easy to change around from set to set. This particular version is only available in this set from what I can remember. He does not have back printing on his face. But I do like how he has the blue bandana. We haven't seen that in the Pirates theme since like the 80s. Nice return for it. He's also got some nice torso printing. I always like the facial printing on him. And he also carries with him a small gun. I don't know exactly the type of gun that this is. I'm going to call it a pistol for now. But it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a pistol. And he also carries a banana. You're going to see what the banana does a little bit later. The banana is going to be used to break free the prisoner. Now, as you can see, the monkey in this set is carrying a key. So, the monkey. <laughs> Alright, enough puns. This is a very um, standard version of a monkey. We've seen this many times, and at least the 90s, as far as Lego sets. Even earlier than that, because it was in the first Pirates theme as well. I don't know if there are any different modifications to this version. Oops. And compared to the previous versions, uh, this is actually the first one I've ever gotten in this form. So I can't really compare them, you know, if this is any different in its molding or a little bit different in its color, of course. But not as far as the shape of it do I recognize any differences. Now, as you can see, he actually has four regular minifig arms and minifig hands that are used for his legs. And he also has a curly tail which you can use for different positions, trying to make him a playful monkey, you know, and you can carry things such as a key in each of his hands. He's got a little bit of room on the bottom of him if you want to sit him on top of a structure, maybe to hold him better on this stand, because he's very easy to fall off. But the monkey and the pirate are going to make a little exchange, break open the, the prison, and the monkey will have some lunch. Next minifigure we have in the set is the Imperial Soldier. We get a total of three soldiers similar in outfit in this set, which is really nice if you wanted to make a good army. Um, I would recommend getting this set and even some of those 349 sets. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Soldier's Arsenal. A cheap way to get a whole bunch of minifigure soldiers of this type. He's got very nice printing on him. You could probably use him even as like a red coat if you're trying to make a revolutionary war scene. American revolutionary, that is. There's a better look at his face printing. Kind of generic with some of the other ones of the time of this set. And this one carries, specifically, he carries a torch for the cannon. And he has a musket for his guard duty. He also has a printed backpack on the back. Very nice printing there. A lot of the other ones are going to have the same exact printing, so I won't get too much into detail with here is the second soldier that we have, and like I've said before, uh, he has relatively the same printing all the way around as the first one that we saw. And the only difference with him is the face, kind of a nice face to put on him. And he only comes with the musket. 
The last soldier of this type, we have a difference of him because not only is he carrying a different weapon, he's carrying a small pistol. He also has a different face, which you can see there. And it's also been, you know, the faces in these figures are very common, so you don't have to worry about exclusiveness. Um, even the hat for him and the plume is kind of common among other figures in the pirate's theme. Uh, that's the other difference with this one, so we can recognize he's a different ranking than some of the other pirates and some of the other soldiers, I mean, in this set. Probably more of like an admiral or a lieutenant. I'm not sure what the ranking system is for these types of soldiers, but you can definitely tell, since this is the only one that has the tri-corner hat, he probably has some sort of higher position than some of the other soldiers. And this that fits in here very easily with just a pin. Leading off the Imperial soldiers, we have the Governor. I think he's also called an Admiral. Nope, he's just called the Governor. I just checked. And very nice torso printing on him. He only comes in, I believe, two or three different sets. If you count the Imperial flagship, this set, and he also comes in a Battle Pack set. I wish I got the Battle Pack, but I'm still glad to get this set. He's got a very nice face printing on him. I believe the face has been used even after this theme, maybe in Castle. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. His cat is supposed to be made in this um, this sort of fashion, where normally it would be like for a pirate, it would be this way. This is made to be fitted that way. Kind of give him some distinct look on him. He's also got a very exclusive looking torso, you know, to show off his rank. And he has a little bit of back printing, mainly just the buttons on his shirt. He also, you can see, has green epaulets, which is different from the other soldiers who have blue epaulets. And this governor carries a periscope and a small pirate sword. Yar, you may be not forgetting the last and the best of the figures. Yes, I saved the best for last. We have Captain Brickbeard. Very excellent look on him. I've... I've seen a couple times in the Lego store that you can find some of his parts in there if you if you go at the certain times that this that this uh, set was available and even afterwards like maybe 2010 or so maybe 2011 but I'm not sure you could actually get some of the torso printing and the face printing not the entire minifigure itself from the um, from the minifig kiosk they usually have in the stores excellent excellent pirate captain I have very few pirate sets outside of the pirate out of the 2009 Pirates theme, and I am very happy to have this pirate, particularly as a captain. Very cool look on him, well designed. Even in comparison to some of the older pirate captains, this one just really does the look very formal, but also very menacing. He's also got gold epaulets, and we get some of these extra epaulets as, um, as extra pieces in the set. I don't have the extra pieces with me, though. I'm sorry. Um, and you can see his hat particularly has that skull and crossbones on it. Here's a better look at his face. What he be staring at? And with this minifigure, we have a pirate sword. I have already mentioned the monkey in this set, so I figure I'll show off the other animal in this set. We have the crocodile. Or is it an alligator? Let me know in the comments, because... I know there are slight differences between them, but as far as what LEGO is going for, they're kind of used at the same time as the same piece. So, I don't know which one this is supposed to be. But I'm just going to go with right now that it's a crocodile. This is the basic version that we've seen for many, many years, and almost no changes on him. You can remove some parts, such as his tail and his mouth, which can open up. And if you have the right pin pieces, you can put them in there. But you can actually break off the mouth and put it back on. Um, fun fact, for those of you who who weren't around for some of the earlier dragon sets, um, these pieces, the tail and the head, are actually used the same way on the dragons in some of the you know some of the sets like Fright Nights, some of the early castle sets. Um, well, not not like the earliest ever made, but you know more the vintage castle sets. But very cool. Um, you know, look on this figure. And we got a bunch of crocodiles throughout the Pirates theme. Even in recent years, such as 2009, I think there's at least one or two other sets that feature this little fella. So, very nice to have him once again. 
In the set's display and the description, just to tell you before we go into the actual set, the idea is that Brickbeard is going to break out one of his fellow pirates, probably one that has some vital information, and so he has to sail off in this small boat to the soldier's fort. Very dangerous, but I'm sure that he can handle it. After all, he's got a pack of dynamite right in the back of here. It fits very snugly inside of this barrel, which is very nice to, you know, add in there and have it kind of hidden so that nobody can suspect that he has a dangerous weapon. But very cool that we have that added in this set. Because at this time, the dynamite piece was very new for 2009, and it was featured in this theme as well as in the Power Miners theme. It's a very basic boat that we get in this set, but still a nice one because you can have the flag on the top, you can flag on the back. It's a little harder clip to put back there, but it can work if you get it right. It might have to flip this around of some kind. Because it is made to be a clip, but there we go. <laughs> you didn't have to. You just have to put it in from the top, and you could just switch the flag around like that. But we'll put it back on the front just the way it was made in the set. Very nice look on that, and it's a detailed piece, not a, or it's a printed piece, not a sticker, which is awesome. We also got two oars with this pirate boat, so you can have metal, you can, I was about to call him Metal Beard. Um, you could have Brick Beard piloting this with, you know, rowing the, rowing the oars, and just put them on him and see how that looks. And yes, the hook can actually hold Lego objects the same as a regular hand could. All right, he's a little bit hard sitting down. I just want to point out, um, just because of the peg leg, it doesn't really have um, the sort of binding that the regular leg does. So here we have a small setup. You can see he's rowing the boat off to find his fellow pirate. Here's a look of the entire soldier's fort. I'm going to break this up into some smaller pieces so we'll get a better look at each one's details and features. It's quite a massive model when you just look at it from this position. It's made in an L shape, but you do have the ability to recustomize the parts to any way you like it. You may have, mentioned that, you may have heard me mention this before in some other videos about this set. And that's one thing I really like about this set in total is how you can interchange all the parts to make your own soldier's fort and maybe even take more of these sets particularly this one you know and add them together to make a huge soldier's fort you know to block off your lego city from pirates just gonna rise the camera up a little bit and you can see it all the way around i'm just gonna put a minifigure here for for scale you can see it's quite large at least when we put more minifigures on there you can see how large you can get. There are a couple stickers. We'll go into detail about those. This is the version that's obviously shown on the set. But as I said, you can interchange all the parts. We have a nice flag on this side. Oops. There we go. Fits nicely back on. This is a look from the back. I'm sorry I can't capture all of this in the same camera space when we started this video. It's a, just a massive set and very really nice as a play set for this price range. Alright, we still got that swinging treasure chest flying around. But here is a look of everything that is shown. This is all built in different parts according to numbered bags and in the instructions. You have one part that is the jail cell and has a cannon on top. You have the second part that has a bridge with a small, kind of like a, an island. I don't know exactly what to call it, but we'll get into more detail about it a little bit sooner. Just has like a palm tree. Next part, we have this little resting area kind of breaking up. You know, it has a small um, roofed section and just a nice little walkway between the two. And the last one that we have is the large tower which has the treasure chest and the crane on top, and also has a room for the governor. So let's look at each part individually. Okay, the first and smallest section of this whole assembly is this small bridge and palm tree. 
As we look around, you can see it's made on a six by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six by ten uh, regular blue plate. Very nice that we get a whole bunch of these in this set, in fact. Not just for this section, but for many others. You can see on here we have some small um, pieces that are jutting out of the sides. And that's how I was able to separate this. And you'll get to see a little bit later some of the other ones have that. And they also have places to hold these so that you can customize the base to whatever you like. The palm tree section in the back is, you know, nothing too much. Nothing to suspect. But we'll get to a little feature about it in just a sec. I wanted to draw attention right now to this bridge because it's a really good design. I really like how they use these fender pieces from some of the Cars sets. And I'm, just, and I'm not saying the movie Cars. I'm saying, like, in Agents they had these types of car fender pieces for some of the larger vehicles and really makes a good appearance for this bridge when you look at it from the sides and from the top it looks excellent I like the simple style to it but also you know really really good design now this palm tree doesn't sway back and forth then in the 90s or so they had and even the 80s when the pirates theme was first introduced they had palm trees that had all these joints that you had to attach together and could move the tree around in different directions just for whatever poses you needed it. This one just stays still and most of it on the top is an assembly. They also have a couple other pieces I didn't take off yet. There we go. So you can see that's just, a, just another pin on the top of there. Now what's special about this tree, and I don't know how this would realistically go into the, the scene, but for play purposes, you can remove the tree from the top and discover some hidden treasure. Ooh. Some red, white, and green little jewels you can hide under here if you want to make an escape. And, you know, need a place to hide these. They also have these small leaf pieces in the front, which look kind of nice to finish up the details for this small section. The next section that we have is the prison with the cannon on top. And we're just going to escort our prisoner in here. Just have to open this up. Need the right fingers to open it up. Lock him up in the brig. Or throw him in the brig. I don't know uh, pirate lingo. I just sit him in there. <laughs> He's just taking a nap. And we'll have our soldier on watch on the top here. And there is no real room on top for the, the soldier to stand with this cannon in the way. You could try to move around the cannon to actually sit him or stand him on here. Maybe move around some of his accessories as well. But most of the surface is made for the cannon. On the bottom we have two of those 6x10 pieces. So it's a little bit wider than the last section we made. And this one has a really nice design. It's mainly just a prison cell, but it has some good features to it. You know, I like how they have these small lanterns on the sides. Um, the jail, you know, over here is nicely put together. I like the door on it. We have a couple stickers in this section. One of them is here, and it's actually made to be... I don't know if you can see it clearly, but... It's actually an amorphic sticker in which some of the sides look like they're painted the the paint hasn't really you know covered them it's supposed to be like a giant brick wall but it's painted over in white so maybe they missed a few splotches you could always not use those if you wanted to just keep the white all the way through but i like the idea of this because it just adds a little bit more to its to its style and a little more life to it now i draw my attention to the back so you can see <clears throat> We have a small window here, and we have all these handles. So what are they for? Well, we're going to get a secret way to break out our criminal, or pirate, should I say. This easily comes off because it's held on by two jumper pieces and a tile. So makes it easy to remove, and also has a little bit of stud space from the top section, so it makes it easy to pull out. On here, we have two stickers. One in the top corner that shows a small spider web, Instead of actually including a, a Lego web in the set. And we also have another one that shows a little check mark. Like, kind of like a tally mark. You know, and it's kind of a thing that's seen in, you know, it, for jokes about people that are in prison for a long time. They're just kind of counting off the days that they're going to be until they're let free, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what the, what the context is. 
Inside of here, there's nothing really special. A lot of empty space. You could stack this up with pirates if you wanted to. Or if you're taking over the base, you could stack it up with, with some of those Imperial soldiers. And in the bottom corner, you can see we have a spider web once again. Similar to the other one, it's just a flipped over version of that same sticker. Now, the reason why I had the banana with this figure is, as shown on the box, let me just put it all back up, it's shown on the box that the banana is sticking through here with the pirate holding it, and the monkey is coming along with his key to open up the jail cell. It's kind of cool how we have that uh, feature on here. And you also have that room if you want to put a, a one by one printed lock piece that's a tile um, from some other sets. You could try to put that on there if you want to have it as a lock. But you also have the ability with the key to lock it in, you know, to unlock this jail cell. But although, you know, you can just open it regularly, just a little harder. Now on the top, we have. As mentioned before, we have the giant cannon, and this can rotate around in 360 degrees. Very good. Very good. I don't know exactly why this is here. I think this is supposed to be the idea of when you fit your... I mean, you can actually load this with some ammunition. And the idea of this piece is just to... As, as in real-life cannons, you just use this piece to tug it in there and make sure that it's in tight. So that's why they include that with some of these pirate cannons. The torch is also fictitious for trying to make the effect of it being lit. And as we go closer to it, this is a cannon that you can tilt around in different directions. We've seen this many years before and after this set, but this is kind of one of the newer versions of it. I don't... I mean, we've seen this cannon in some of the previous sets, but this one's more modified from what we've seen before 2009. So, it's kind of a newer piece. Then we just have to pull back on this. It's spring-loaded. You pull back on this and get to fire it. Just see if I can get it in frame. Boom. It's got a lot of power inside of there. So be careful when in play. But very cool look on that. Very cool setup for this jail cell. Good size for it. Um, I appreciate how big this jail cell can be to provide a lot of action and play in this area. I also wanted to draw attention underneath here. Yeah, you can see this, this platform is made with some of the 1x6 arch pieces. It's kind of clever, and most of the bottom is hollow, but, and you can even see a little bit of black and green bricks in there just to cover it up. And you also see on the sides more of the attachment pieces, and this attaches on both sides. Very cool design for the jail cell. Our next segment is a simple one. This is an angled section of the soldier's fort. Basically, you can make this into the L shape just with this section alone, the way it's constructed. Now, in this one, we have a lot of interesting, um, you know, design to it, but we don't have anything as far as a real play feature. I'll get through quickly. The play features are simply the ability to move this roof up and down, but it's meant to be an angled thing, so... Uh, it's intended to have that slanted design. You have the ability to wave the flag around if you'd like to. Very easy to move it. And as you saw before, it's also easy to remove it. Very simple pirate, um, soldier's flag, should I say. We also have the one soldier that's sitting along here. He can just patrol up and down along the along this area just to be sure that there are no prisoners breaking out. We have a small rock structure over here. Very cool idea so that you can have a little bit more action, like if you had uh, the pirate ship running into here or something. Um, and you also have along here, as you saw before, some of those one by one pieces like this. Those are meant to be a sort of docks for, you know, for ships that are entering the harbor area. Inside, we have a very hollow structure underneath, but still holds the model together. And as we look around, again, there's no real play features, but it just has some neat design to it, um, just for a small section, breaking away from all the bigger stuff in this set. And as I mentioned before, we had a fish, if you count him as an animal. Uh, we have him just sitting in this barrel, waiting for lunch. 
So that's our little section. And as I mentioned before, you can attach parts here and parts here. Very cool little section. Um, I forgot to mention before we close out of that, we have a sticker up here with Captain Brickbeard's face on it. It says reward 10,000 gold. Wow. 10,000 gold. That's very valuable for such a notorious pirate like him. And I think it's kind of dangerous in that in that respect for his little rescue mission. So he might get captured here too. And last but not least in our soldiers fort structures, we have the large Imperial Tower. This section is made for the governor to keep a watch out for all of his um, soldiers and any pirate activity that could be in the area. You can see we have more of these little platforms. We could tie off boats, you know, in a pretend way once they arrive at the dock. Good size for it, actually, when I just put the boat next to there. And as we look around, um, as mentioned before, it's very hollow underneath. Um, but it's still sturdy, holds together really well as far as this whole structure. Many of the structures hold together very well after so many years of me having it. You can see more of the, the, the facade painted or unpainted sections of the brick walls on the sides. Those are again stickers over here. We have the flags on here. Those are printed pieces. Both flags and both sides of the flags. And over here, it's plain. I thought there might have been more stickers there, but we only have the ones on one side. We have attachments on the bottom on each side of this, so you can put it to any sort of spot in the pirate for uh, in the soldier's fort. I keep calling a pirate for some reason. Now inside of here, let's take a look on the inside. On the first level, you can see we just have a keg. Not really anything else, and again, you could just store soldiers in here if you wanted to. Maybe they could just be lounging and maybe having a, you know, a break from their guard duty. On top of there, we have a section where the governor is positioned. He doesn't really have anything in here again. It's very blank and very empty room, but if there was anything in there, it probably would have made it very crowded. I mean, even a 2x2 a two two table in there would have been a little bit you know, hard to move the figure around. So I understand why there's, you know, virtually nothing in here. There are no stickers on the inside. Um, just looking around there. So we don't have to worry about getting any zooms in as far as the stickers go. Um, and I mentioned that there isn't anything on the inside specifically for this level because in some of the Pirates cartoons that are shown, or in some of the comics that were shown in around 2009 um, for this theme, when they were shown in the Lego Club magazine, they showed this They showed this set, and they showed this room specifically having a desk with a map on it. And there is no map in this set, and there's no desk in this set. So it's a little bit outside of what the set actually offers. And on the top section, we can have this small battlement area, just kind of like the prison that we had. But also, this one has a crane on top. There's a little bit of dust gathering on the sides, but... This crane can turn around in 360 degrees. It has a working winch on the side, so we can turn this to raise and lower the treasure chest hanging on it. There we have it raised. And then we can lower it all the way down. If you had a if you had a, an Imperial ship, this would be a very nice idea for um, for something to put it in. We're putting our treasure chest in there. Now that's on the bottom, you still have a lot of room on the winch beyond how far down this can go. You know, just for ex additional play, and if you want to use this piece and other things that you were building, very good to have. Inside our treasure chest, we have lots of money, but no jewels. The jewels have already been buried inside of the, um, underneath the palm tree. So we only have in here the coins of 10, 20, 30, and 40. And in very good condition because I haven't touched this in a while. We also have the crane itself on the top. You can move this up and down on a ratcheted joint. However, you want to be careful moving it down because at times it's, very, it's actually very fragile. The way it's made is only two plates high. And 
you know, it's kind of a poor construction in that sense. I would have wished that they had like another few tiles on top of here just for the added strength. Because if you pull it down too quick or too sudden, you know, you can even see already it has a little bit of break in here. It's nice for the for the effect of, you know, the colors used, but it also lacks a little bit in structure. And you can kind of seat this guy up here. Again, there's not much room on top of these uh, buildings that you can actually seat someone or even stand them. But they're going to have to stand on part of a battlement, if anywhere. So there we have our next section and last section of the set, the Imperial Tower. So, as I've made mention to this set before, we have the ability to attach all four of these structures in different combinations. I just wanted to try to fit the alligator behind here. Kind of can squeeze it in there if you wanted to, but I don't know how far in it can get. Just another thing you can use the alligator for, I guess. Or you could just just kind of hang out around the the bay area. Um, but getting back to the, the structures themselves. Since we have different attachments for these pieces, you can put them together in different combinations, and they still work together pretty nicely in terms of connection. Sometimes it takes a little bit more effort if you have the two pins on both sides. Ah, there we go. And you can make new combinations. Now, the only limits that we have is this palm tree section. Since the palm tree is, you know, has these la has these leaves that branch out on the top, you can't always put it in every spot. As you can see, I can't even fit it right next to our imperial tower um, in the set structure. It wouldn't even fit between the towers too much, so we're gonna have to fit that onto the side on the back. So. You know, we have a bunch of different ways you can combine this. Um, maybe I'll take some pictures and, and try to post them on Flickr or Instagram of the different combinations that can be associated with just these four parts. Now, some combinations may work better than others. Even the one you see right here, you know, why would you walk right into a wall? I mean, that might not work for everyone. So you could always change it around. And, and you know, it, for me, that adds a little bit of flavor to the set. And it's probably one of my favorite features beyond the regular features of the set. It adds an idea for, you know, continued play, you know, even when this set has already been played with a dozen times. You could still pull it back and say, hey, I want to make this type of fort. Or if you're building a Lego city, whether or not it's from, from mocks or from sets, you could use this as a way of combining all of these sections into your Lego city so that you can build up a nice dock area and, you know, try to make it in a way that is pleasing to your city, whatever your your setup could be. So you have lots of different combinations here. This, this one actually doesn't work at all. I, <laughs> at least in this section, you can see right there, the bridge is way up here, and that, that, that's, that pier section ends right there. So you're falling right into... A, a palm tree unless you want it that way. I mean imagination definitely lets you do almost Virtually anything that you want so you don't have to do it in a logical manner You can always make it in any combination that you like to and again Just think of the possibilities of adding more of these sets together and trying to make a larger soldiers fort imagine that you can make an entire You know dock area with fitting huge you know, fleet ships and flagships of all different kinds that could fit in here, you know, in whatever manner you like. So, as you can see, we have, you know, quite a lot of fun with this set in total. I'd highly recommend this set if you could get it at a good price online. Um, it's an excellent build and very fun figures with it. Uh, one of the reasons I got this set was to get Captain Brickbeard and to get the Governor. However, I didn't look at the fact that this has so much more potential to it. As a building set, this is one of my favorites. I believe it's in my top five or top six list um, of building sets. And and you know the it's a not not building sets. It's like sets to keep built. Um, you could look for the video on my channel. It's an excellent set all the way around. I really I know it has a lot of plain 
areas to it, especially in the tower and especially in this little L-shaped section. But I'm not, you know, too mad about that. I would have liked some accessories to put in there, but there are definitely other sets from Pirates you could add in there very easily. And this also encourages an idea for how you can build your LEGO City around this set. It gives a great idea for recustomizing all of your structures and putting it to the same scale that would fit for this set. So that way you could have a lot more fun and it gives a little bit more depth than just having it on a plate and building up. This one has it a little bit up from there and creates a nice pirate scene. Very good pirate set if I was to recommend any pirate set that I've ever owned and ever reviewed. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments what you guys think about this set and all the different combinations. Let me know also if you want to see all the different combinations just for attaching all the pieces to each other. And I'll try to make it into a photo slideshow if you guys are interested. So thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time with more LEGO set reviews. Yarrr.